to bring the lost to Jesus for membership in his family, to develop them into Christ-like maturity, to equip them for Christ's ministry on earth, to improve their quality of life, to be a ministry to the total man. to encourage you in the word of God as found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 1. Verse number 1 and 2 for your hearing on today. It is these words. And I, brothering, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Father, for these few moments, I ask that you will anoint us to give a word of encouragement to the faithful few. Word my mouth and quicken my heart and my mind that the words we speak will be of life and victory. I'll thank you for it, give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. And we all said together, Amen. Amen. From these two passages of Scripture, I want to use this subject, a simple gospel for a complex age. Help me say a simple gospel for a complex age. We all know what the gospel is. For many of us have been touched and changed by the influencing power of the gospel. For the gospel is the good news and the glad tidings of Jesus Christ. His birth, his life, his ministry, his death and resurrection. The delivering and saving power of the gospel. You see, the gospel expresses to mankind God's redemptive plan for humanity. God's predestined plan. Help me say predestined plan. His predestined plan to bring man back in to reconciliation with God. The gospel, saints of God, is a simple gospel because the way the gospel is, it's so plain. Isaiah says it's so plain until a fool cannot err therein. And I thank God, says Jesus. Jesus, in speaking to his disciples, says, I thank God. God, I thank thee, Father, because thou hast hid it from the wise and the prudent, but you have revealed it unto babes. It's just a simple gospel. It's not something that's hard to understand. It's very plain, and but even though it's plain, yet it is powerful. But it's hard for the intellectual to understand. It's hard for him to accept the ways of holiness, the ways of truth. The trained mind 
has been programmed to find an answer to everything. The human being needs an answer to just about everything that he sees. But there are so many things that the human being cannot answer until he will run into a brick wall. And when they run into that brick wall, then you got to fall back on God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 19, it says, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. The wisdom of man needs proof. Man needs proof based on facts. But this simple gospel, help me say simple gospel. This simple gospel depends not on facts but it's built on faith and faith can't be seen or touched by human hands faith can't be seen by the human eye and it is not always understood by the human mind but it is the power that God gives the human being it's the power that he gives a believer watch this to wish your circumstances in to reality help me say the power of faith you see the Greeks could not understand this simple gospel because they sought for wisdom and Wisdom told them not to believe in anything that they could not touch, see, or feel. Wisdom says a child must have a man for a father. But the simple gospel, help me say the simple gospel. The simple gospel says a child was born of a virgin. The Greeks thought this was just foolishness. They had to have gods that they could touch. The Greeks, they, they had to have gods gods that they could touch you see the reason you hear us talk so much about the Greeks is because Paul did a lot of his ministry in Greece and the Greeks were known as great philosophers and great teachers but they had to have gods that they could touch and see and feel so they made their own God they had a God for love. Are y'all with me? They had a God for love called Eros. Then the female God was Aphrodite. Then there was a God of the wind. And the God of the wind was the keeper of the winds and his name was Erelos. There was a God for the sun, the sun, and his name was Helio. Then there was a God of fertility or a God for women, and her name was Diana. The Greeks, they had many gods. Can I talk to you? This is why when you go into the Acts of the Apostle and you find the story of Paul when Paul had gone into Athens. He goes into Athens and he goes up on Mars Hill and there was a plaque that had been placed there and the plaque said to the unknown God. And the Greeks would worship, but they were worshiping something that they didn't understand. And what had happened in that day, a plague had come and destroyed many lives. Are y'all with me? 
It had destroyed so many lives until what the Greeks did because they didn't understand Jehovah God. They didn't understand the God of the Bible. What they did was to take sheep and they began to take the sheep and release them on Mars Hill. And when they released those sheep, wherever the sheep would fall, they wouldn't feed them or do anything, but wherever the sheep would fall and die, they would then sacrifice the sheep to the unknown God. Paul said, I see that you people are very superstitious, meaning I see that you people are very religious, but I want you to understand that this unknown God, he does not, he's not made with the hands of men. This, this un -God, unknown God, uh, he's not a God uh, that just blows on you. He, he's a God that gives life. And he's a God that takes life. This is the God that doesn't live in temples of stone, but he lives in the souls of men. You see, Paul had to argue, if you make a note with Acts, the 17th chapter and about verse 18, he begins to argue with the philosophers and of the great thinkers of the Greeks. He begins to talk to the Stoics. The Stoics were the disciples of Zeno and Cryphaeus, who believed in self-sufficiency and self-discipline. Are y'all with me? And then there was the, the Epicureans, who were the disciples of Eupicurus, who gave up the search for pure truth and began to seek for true pleasure through life's experiences. Then he had to argue with the Jews, the followers of Moses. And the Jews had a problem because the Jews couldn't believe in this simple gospel because they were looking for a king. They, they were looking for a king that had an army that was ready to come back and overthrow their enemy, the Romans. But what they saw was a, a boy, a baby, a man who had been born in a barn. Y'all yeah. don't hear me. He, he was born in a manger and he was wrapped in animal clothes swaddling clothes that they, they, they saw a poor carpenter's son they, they seen that boy grow up in front of their eyes and when they seen him grow up in front of their eyes they heard him come with this simple gospel and when they heard him come with the simple gospel, I'm now in the 13th chapter of Matthew. They heard him teaching this simple gospel that changes lives. They said, where cometh this man with all of this knowledge? Are y'all with me? Where cometh this man with all of this teaching? We know him. We've seen him. He grow up here among us. His daddy ain't nothing but a carpenter. Oh, y'all don't hear me. And the Bible said Jesus could not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. They, they were having problems because of this simple gospel. They, they saw him. They saw him die. They, they saw the death. The death. He died the death of a criminal. And they seen him buried in a borrowed grave. He, he was too poor to buy his own grave plot. 
but had to borrow the grave of one of his disciples. They were so against him until when John writes to us, John writes in the first chapter, verses 11 and 12. Y'all not bored with me, are you? The Bible said he came to his own, and his own received him not. They, they crucified him and said let his blood be upon us and upon our children. And I want you to know yes it's still a simple gospel. It's a simple gospel in an age that has lost respect for God and humanity. But it's still a simple gospel. It's a simple gospel because our society is being torn apart from the foundation. You, you have to be blind not to see what's happening to our world. The institutions that God has designed to build his world upon, they're eroding right in front of our eyes. Can I talk to you? But that simple gospel will still work for you if you let it. Number one, the family. Help me say the family. The family over. 50% of the people that are marrying in the traditional family, they're ending up in divorce. And the sad thing, it doesn't surprise me about the world, but it sure shakes me about the church. Because we ought not have so many divorces not in the body of Christ. We ought not be here among us because we ought to be a people that have the ability Ability to forgive. The Bible says if I can't forgive you, neither will my heavenly father, which is in heaven, will forgive me. So we're looking at the foundation, the family. When God created humanity, he created a, a male and a female. And he told the male, he said, I want you to be fruitful and I want you to multiply. But I want you to notice what Satan is doing. Satan has crept in the minds of the family. Our poor women because men are not willing to stand up and carry the responsibility that's been laid on them. They're walking away from their families. They're getting babies but the man ain't in the house. So thus our young boys watch. Why is it so important? Why is it so important? Because life ain't in the body of a woman. Life is planted in the wound of a woman. But life is in the body of a man. So what the devil has done is deceived humanity to where the man no longer is in place and when the man is not in place the head help me say the head if the head is not in place the body is going to get out of order whenever the mind ain't working right and the head ain't working right the body can't function right so Thus, we got a new kind of family. We got a new kind of normal. They call it the new normal. But this new normal is what the devil is doing. He's causing our young men to identify with their mothers rather than identify with the man. And so thus our boys are growing up uh, not knowing whether they want to be a man uh, or whether they want to be like their mama. Oh, y'all don't hear me. It's a trick of the devil and I ain't fighting nobody. Uh, the reason it's such a damnable thing uh, is because it's war against God. Devil is fighting against God because God set up a program of pre-creation. Uh, 
let me change that it's pro creation. God set up a plan of procreation. Now, you see, God is the creator. He created Adam, but he didn't create you. He created Adam and he created Eve. And he put within them procreation so they could reproduce like kind. Are y'all with me? So every man has uh, his sons and daughters uh, in his womb. And he tells that man I want you to be fruitful and uh, multiply. So when a man then turns around uh, and places his seed in the body uh, of another man uh, there can't be no procreation. So the reason the thing is so damnable is because because it's a plan to block God's plan of life giving. Uh, Y'all don't hear me. Man can come up with all of the deceitful tricks uh, in order to replace it. Uh, but you don't see dogs uh, going with a male dog. You, you don't see... Uh, mm, you don't see a female dog uh, making love to a female dog. You, you don't see a horse, a male horse, uh, making love to uh, a female horse. Uh, it's God's plan uh, of procreation uh, to keep life moving. But you got to understand what the devil has done. Uh, the devil said in his heart heart. Uh, where you at brother preacher? I'm now in Isaiah the 14th chapter and about verse 12 when the devil said in his heart uh, I'm going to be like God and what the devil has done uh, the devil has come into the thing that God loves the most uh, and what is it that you love the most I hear that Bible talking to my mind uh, and he says what is it about man uh, that thou art so mindful of him you you have made him just uh, a little lower than the angels. You turned around uh, and you made the man in your likeness uh, and in your image. Uh, so the devil says, I'm going to be like God. Uh, when God created man and the angel to give him praise. Uh, oh my God. God. I hear that Bible feeding my mind. I'm now in Revelations chapter 5 and verse number 11. When he goes on to say thou art worthy O God to get praise and honor for all things have thou created and for thy pleasure thou were created. God created you to give him praise praise. Will y'all help me preach? Y'all looking at me so funny. I, I want y'all to talk back to me. Say, God put me on this earth to give him praise and to give him glory. He wants the glory out of your life. He, he wants the praise out of your life. But remember the devil said, I I want to be like God. You have to be blind not to understand the spiritual thing that's going on because the devil now has come in through liquor. He's come in through drugs in order to paralyze your mind and to make you a habit person. He comes to let the chemicals make you a slave to the chemical. And when you become a slave to the chemical. You start to worship the thing rather than worship God. And when you worship anything else other than God, you become an idolater. And God said, don't you bring nothing else in front of my face. You can't let nothing, nothing separate you from your creator. Nothing separate you from the God that has given you life. Nothing that's 
given to you uh, your life. There is nothing that gives you life. Your doctor don't give you life. Paul said, in him we live, we move, and we have our being. Uh, don't let the devil trick you. Uh, don't let the devil enslave you uh, to the habits of this world. Uh, he wants to take you and make you his servant. Uh, you're either going to worship God uh, or you're going to worship the devil. I'm like Joshua today in the 24th chapter of Joshua when Joshua said as for me and my house as for me and my children I'm going to serve the Lord you ought to look back over your shoulder and see where God has brought you from how God has made ways how he's opened doors you you need to give him the glory give him the praise because he's been better to you y'all don't hear me he's been better to you than you've been to yourself let's take a praise break go on and give him some praise Can't you see what the devil's doing? <laughs> the devil is trying to take, oh my God, uh, I hear revelation again in my mind. <laughs> and I'm now in the 11th chapter and about verse 12 or 13. Uh, in there when he says the devil knows uh, that his time is short. Uh, and he wants to take everybody he can. Uh, you can see a falling away. Uh, you can see people who are losing their desire for God. Uh, but don't don't you get like them. You keep your mind on Jesus. Keep your mind on the prize. Keep your focus. Help me say keep your focus. I think of that old song of the church that can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. There are times when I feel like throwing up my hands, but when I get like Jeremiah, when Jerry, 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 Jeremiah got depressed and he got burdened in his heart, Jeremiah said, I, I'm going to quit preaching. He said, I ain't going to prophesy in his name no more. But when Jeremiah got to thinking about what God had done for him uh, Jeremiah said it's just like fire it's just like fire shut up in my bones will y'all help me preach tell your neighbor say I can't turn around I've come too far I've come too far I can't turn around now so hold on hold on hang on in spite of it all cause I got a feeling that everything I said I got a feeling that everything is going to be alright Count on Malone Media Productions for all your professional video needs. Services include sports filming and editing, professional documentaries and presentations, promotional videos and infomercials, job fair and recruitment videos, video consultation and training, portrait videos for all your precious moments, church and business commercials, as well as four camera wedding and event filming. Contact Cottrell Malone of Malone Media Productions for a free promotional DVD and quote. 